It's the Kitty Gang Show on Starbucks Nation TV. It's the Kitty Gang Show on Starbucks Nation TV. And we're coming to you live from CB Giddy. It's the Giddy Gang Show. Giddy Gang Show. 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 It's the Giddy Gang Show on Cigar Box Nation TV. Welcome to yet another Giddy Gang Show. This, I think, actually this time for real, is show number 90. Can you believe we've done 90 of these? I can. I feel it in my joints, people. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's uh, But we're glad you're here with us. We're doing a little yes. run-up to Father's Day, which, of course, is next weekend, yeah. along with some other fine events next weekend. Yes. Uh, we've got uh, Glenn Watt here, of course, and uh, not sure if he's ready to make an appearance yet, but we got Over somebody there. new sitting in in the producer's chair today, somebody you might... Uh, May or may not recognize, I don't know, but we'll, we'll get to him in just a moment. Uh, so, we got a big sale going on at CB Giddy, the Father's Day sale. I went on, or I went through the catalog of, of thousand, you know, 1,500 products, whatever we have now, picked out 187 of them to put on sale at a 20% discount. And these are all products kind of geared towards or themed around dads, fathers, dads, and such. Um, kits, all of, almost all of our kits are on sale. Almost all of my, I'm pretty sure all of, or most of my songbooks. Uh, things like slides and shirts and, and uh, tools and, and some, some of the, a, a smaller range of parts, but all on sale. Now, I want to uh, apologize, we had a bit of a, a bug a programming bug on the site that was making stuff show up in the Father's Day sale category that wasn't supposed to be in there. Hmm. I have fixed the bug. We had some people like, you know, like, why didn't I get my discount? Well, sorry about that. I had a, two settings that were conflicting with each other and got it fixed now, so sorry for any uh, confusion. Who we got out there, Glenn Watt? You've got Rusty Taylor. RT! Uh, who else? Helen Ringer, Tiffany, it's always good to see you, by the way. Marty Tauber, Keith Rierich, Jonathan M. Lagasse. Who you else? know, it occurs to me, nope. I guess we could do it next week, but well, let's keep going. Um, I could ask Marty to stop by and talk about this yes. festival live on the air. Uh, if he wasn't out fishing, I'm sure he'd be at least considerate, but yeah. we didn't. Sorry, but it's coming up next weekend. Yeah, it is. It's pretty cool, actually. Marty done, Marty's worked his tail off to You're make that You're going up, so. right? Yes, sir. On your own, or? Yeah. You want to go up together? Sure. I got to come back for a music session that evening. Ah. But. All right. Later in the evening. We'll anyway, on. anyway, we can figure that out off, off screen. See you in Maine. That's what we're saying. I was up in Maine this past weekend. Beautiful North Conway in Jackson, New Hampshire, up in the White Mountains. Mm -hmm. Still snow on the slopes of Mount Washington. Oh, nice. Saw it with me own eyes. Sure, and I did. Nice. Um, so, uh, getting briefly through the announcements and such, the sale is going on through the, what, 16th? Yes. Something like that, actually. Father's Day. 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, midnight. Probably. Around or, there. Around there. <laughs> or <laughs> maybe we'll give them a couple extra hours, because we oh, always right. get a couple of stragglers who try it at the last minute, and it doesn't work, and they get all mad. Uh, but we try to help everybody, whatever we can do. There we go. That's it. Um, so Martin Shoot out there, Chuck Austin, yeah. Philip Cunningham, Good who old. I believe recently got got back into uh, building with nice. a big easy kid. I yeah. think I saw him post on the Friends of Giddy page. Good to see you, Philip. Go Blues. Yeah, that's buddy. coming from a Bruins fan. Just saying. Anyways, Hannah. Watch yourself, what? Jim Morris is out there. Good to see you, Jim. Um, just uh, while we're in the uh, announcements section, I don't know how many of you follow such things, but we have lost a couple of my favorite 
musicians. Mm -hmm. In the last week, two people have passed away. Leon Redbone passed away a few days back, and just yesterday morning, Dr. John, a uh, famous New Orleans boogie blues piano player, uh, passed away at the age of 77. So, uh, I've always liked Leon Redbone's rendition of Polly Wally Doodle. If you don't know, he, he kind of redid in his own style a, a lot of older traditional songs, and of course he was yeah, a, a New Orleans, uh, uh, well-known New Orleans great, as was Dr. John. So if you, if you're a fan of New Orleans, we lost a couple of a uh, couple of great ones this week. But here's a little little pick of a Polly Wally Doodle on one of our Mountain Tenor kits in the key of C. C it is. Once I launched into singing that, I usually sing it in G, but I can't pick it as good in G, so I pick it in, in C and things happen. Uh, so, of course, that's one that Leon Redbone uh, had some success with. I saw uh, Michael Capato saying that WWOZ down there in New Orleans has been doing a Dr. John tribute ongoing. I'm sure Shane sent me a message earlier. He's like, can you imagine Dr. John's second line? If you don't know what a second line is, that's kind of the, uh, the the funeral celebration march, that parade that they do down in New Orleans for pretty much everybody. But you know the the more famous uh, sons and daughters of the city certainly get a bigger turnout. I first time I went to New Orleans, David Bowie had just passed away recently, and I got caught up in his second line. Now he wasn't a New Orleansite, <laughs> but well loved by the city and it it was a lot there was a lot of things happening and <laughs> i could only take it for so long but yeah good time <clears throat> now dr john of course uh we didn't rehearse this one i don't know what key i do it in but Ico Ico was one of the songs that he was well known for i don't believe he wrote it but he named albums after it of Ico Ico and Polly Wally Doodle. unrehearsed tribute to two musical greats um yeah buddy now yeah, speaking buddy. of music uh or speaking of this kit actually we decided to, uh, to give two of them away last week last week's giveaway the winners have been chosen and will be announced in the third half of today's show gotta wait all right so now we're going to bring up somebody whose voice you may have heard floating about <laughs> in the background yeah. Uh, she just sings that girl. Our own Kim Sterling. But first, I, I would like to introduce our, our temporary sit-in producer oh, for the day, whom you you may have, have met in the past, maybe not. Uh, we'd like to thank him. We're not sure exactly how it's going to go. He's trying to get his, his uh, chapeau in place, I believe. I'd like to uh, thank and welcome our good buddy, 
I'm like, is he going to show himself? <laughs> it's hard to see the buttons when you're a panda. All right. Well, thank you. Oh. I'd like the record to show there is no, there is no panda. Uplighting. Uh, wow. Uh, I was, I was just going to say that's not going to last long. That hot in there. Yeah, it gets, it's getting warmer up here, and finally warming up in New Hampshire. Uh, so, as a lead-in, a preparation for Father's Day coming up next Sunday. And the end of school. And the school finally happening here, happening here in New Hampshire. I think some other parts of the country get out a bit earlier than we do because, like where I come from in Ohio, there's no February break. That whole week oh. off in February, that's nonsense. And they get out a week earlier, it turns out. My, my youngest nephew graduating from high school today, Cameron John Grassy, well done. He's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, so uh, this is a song that isn't necessarily about fathers, but it's about such things. So a little uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash with Kim Starling singing the lead on it when she usually sings the harmony because yep. Tyler Foss does the lead. So I went to him this morning. I was like, we might need to run this early because it may not happen. <laughs> I don't uh, know how to sing the melody. And I'm going to be trying to do the harmony, so... It's a full shit show, people. with a fatherish song. Hey, father's mentioned in there. Oh, sure. Teach your children well, their father's hell will slowly go by. <laughs> no. Oh, um, I thought that's why you chose it. <laughs> you turned out the cast in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we got more Father's Day stuff coming up. Oh, she did do that sometime. Well, 
But it's not a happy Father's Day. You know, it's all about not making time Day. for your just, kids. And we have to do it I don't know anything about that. Anyway, Some we thank you for joining us. We'll get Glenn Watt back up here off of Let the cast, off the casting couch. Put down the tea bag and let's go, buddy. <laughs> What is going on around here? I don't know. It's warm in here, folks. We all get a little loopy when it's Do it so. <laughs> um, so I think it's uh, just about time. Thank you, Kim. Is it already? What corner? Ah, Peanut Edward has got it. I think so. All right. When announcing the giveaway yeah. winner later in the show, don't forget Father's Day sale. All right, well, listen. It's All good, right. It's good to see Janet Baker Hughes, by the way. Hey, Ma Baker. Ma Baker Giddy. Ma Giddy in the Louis house. Louis LaManna, Marty Tauber. Colin McKenzie's out oh, there. I'm already held to the show. How's that uh, Mountain Dulcimer calling there? Coming, Colin, excuse me. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen any updates nope. lately. Dar Stella Bada gives you a sounds great, by the way. Thank you, Dar. Woo! You're awesome, Dar. Shane Spiel's out there. Jacob Dillander. Who else you got out there? Everybody's out there. Good stuff. Damon Park, good to see you, brother. And Shaq Collins from Shacksonville. Always a pleasure, sir. Now, this is going to be... A good walk corner for you and for me both. We're gonna actually, it's gonna be relatively short in number but long in the uh, in the word. So bear with me here. First up, what we have is from Rabid Bat. I have, he writes, and actually, you might appreciate this, Ben. This is a uh, four string mountain tenor kit. So well done, thank you. I think this is just, it just looks terrific. That, no, sorry, two below tenor, two below tenor kick. Excuse me, I probably can't mind my name. Strike one, one. Ah, uh, just, this is gonna be a long at bat. I had a great day with this build, <laughs> writes Rabid Bat. Everything fit perfectly, uh, which is due to Ben, Biddy, ben Giddy Baker's kit making prowess. Uh, everything fit perfectly, so thank you for saying that, Rabid Bat. I went in with a walnut stain and distressed it a little on a second pass. Onyx stain on the fretboard, as you can see, in, Nick has the next image for you. There's an onyx stain on the fretboard, and he finished it with a white bomb poly. It sounds amazing, and I agree with you, Rabid Bat. It does sound amazing. Those are great kits that we're putting out, and uh, I'm glad that you got, got one yourself and made it look as good as you did. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. Next up, we have Sue M, a new, a relatively new friend of ours. And I'm excited, like I keep saying every week, that I have multiple women in the bot's corner. I'm excited to see women out there, so... Sue is no exception. She writes, I joined up with the Friends of CBGD Facebook group, which, have you done that? Have you done that? The Friends of City CBGD Facebook group. That's what Sue joined, and that's what we're talking about right now. She says she was looking at all the posts that people have shared of their new builds in that group. Uh, she says that she saw one of a series of license plate guitars by member Hollis Fenn. Hope you're out there, Hollis. Uh, and she goes on to write that I made a comment that I like to build with the South Carolina plate because it had the state tree on the plate and because she is a botanist. Um, did you know that? I Biologist? Did not yeah. know that. All right. Anyhow, uh, Hollis commented back that uh, he'd send her one if she promised to make something with it. And so here she is mocking up uh, a license plate guitar using a CB Giddy license plate box kit. And uh, she essentially goes on to say that uh, it's really cool to meet people like Hollis Fenn in the group and uh, to have that sort of interaction with each other and to just basically carry on in civil, polite, and friendly conversation, helping one another out, learning how, how to build and play these instruments. And I'm really excited, Sue, that you're sharing this with us and that Hollis and you connected to the group and the, the more people, I, was it Scott Van, I can't remember his Van, last name? Vander Stow. Vander has been getting, uh, been drumming up a lot of uh, soldering talk and whatnot in the group, so you find some good conversations in there. I hope that you go check it out. It's a public group. It's not closed. You can see the conversations in there before you join if you want, and I hope that you do. And the next and last up is from our good friend down in North Carolina, the Chapel Groove Magic Daddy. Here he is. There's the guy. What's up, Matthew Simpson? I know that you're out there. At least I hope you still are. And uh, Nick, please feel free to scroll through these at your leisure because you know there's just too many for me to start pointing and choosing. And Matthew writes about this. This is a wonderful story. I just check it out. So Matthew writes, Hello, Giddy Gang. Let me tell you a story. So that's what I'm doing. Picture it. Sawmills, a small rural, commu rural root community with a volunteer fire department and one traffic light in the foothills of North Carolina, 30 minutes from the world-famous Grandfather Mountain. It's July in 1984, and the movie Purple Rain hit the theaters. At that time, I was 10 years old and had just learned the joy of the guitar. Having been immersed in music since birth, my earliest memory of music is William Tell's Overture, commonly known as the Lone Ranger theme song. I was probably two years old then, watching the Lone Ranger on a small black and white TV. No cable, no VCRs. 
I was over, I was also I also remember watching the Lawrence Welk show and Hee Haw on Saturday nights and the gospel singing Jubilee on Sunday mornings while getting ready for church. I fell in love with the sound of the piano from listening to Liberace and Farrington Teicher and then Chopin. Then I found the Southern Gospel Men Quartet bass singers as my next pursuit into music, and that led me to learn and play tuba from 7th to 12th grades. We're building up to something here. He's got a lot of instruments underneath his belt, people. I fell in love with the guitar, writes Matthew, because Magic Daddy, because I had heard the Prince album titled 1999. Songs like Little Red Corvette and Raspberry Beret were hot. Then Purple Rain hit. You could tell it was Prince, but it was completely different sound. Enter this guy named Dave Rusin, who created the cloud guitar that you see that Matthew's building in this post. Now, and that cloud guitar is what you see in the movie Purple Rain. Dave Rusin, the builder, is quoted as saying, for a solid body, when it comes to shaping wood, that's about as tough as it gets. And painting, it was the worst thing ever. He writes about that cloud guitar that he built for Prince. And, in his own way, Matthew Simpson agrees 100%. As you can see here, it's a lot of work. Jump ahead to 1986, it's August and I just turned 13 years old. We had just gotten our first microwave in 1986. First microwave in VCR. No blockbuster video around then. We did not have a mom and pop videotape rental, or we did have a mom and pop videotape rental store. Instead of going to a movie for my birthday that year, I opted for renting five movies. Purple Rain was one of my selections and I watched it three times before returning it the next day. I've probably seen it another 100 times in almost 33 years since. Are you checking out these people, these pictures, people? This is a, a great setup and how Matthew is making his own cloud guitar, you know, inspired by Prince. It's really cool stuff. Yes, the movie is campy, he writes about uh, Purple Rain. Yes, Prince was a terrible actor, but to his benefit, the movie is an artist's love story. It tells the timeless tale of dealing with your family strife, bullying, facing your demons, and then finally realizing your dream. And of course, you get the girl in the end, lol. Simply put, it's straight ahead, romantic, and familiar. Purple Rain, the song, the soundtrack, the movie, Prince and all his musicality, writing, playing 27 instruments, Prince did, and going through all, going through the same stuff I did, and that guitar he played, well, that's all why I wanted to learn to play, how to play guitar. And I told myself that one day I would, and that I would own a cloud guitar. In the years since seeing Purple Rain for the first time, I've learned to play some piano, flute, saxophone, as well as trumpet, trombone, tuba, and harmonica. But guitar has always eluded me. Thanks to cigar box guitars, not only can I now play guitar, but I can also make them. So guess what I built? My own cloud guitar, because who, because who has $30,000 laying around to buy one? Good point. This build has been in the works for a year now, so I'm finally so proud it's finally finished. The Magic Cloud is a Prince Cloud tribute build. It's got electronics from a North Carolina company, two matched Wicked Buckers wound by our own Marty Tauber, and fret wire strings and tuners, volume pot and jack, all from CB Giddy Crash Supply. Thank you, Matthew. The body is hand carved quarter sawn, quarter sawn hickory, and the neck and fretboard are poplar. It's a three stringer with a 23 inch scale laid out using the tool found in Shane Spiel's book, Poor Man's Guitar. Electronics cover plate, as you've seen in these series of pictures, the electronics cover plate is made from a piece of the Purple Rain vinyl record and a piece of the album cover glued together and then sealed with polyurethane. The color is gloss grape, Purple Rain, and is misted with silver metallic clear before being uh, polyurethane treated. And Magic Daddy just simply goes on to write, thank you very much to all of you for checking this out. And thank you, Matthew, for sharing that with us, who's been loud and rowdy, by the way, in the Chapel of Groove since 2015. And that has been Watt Corner. Thank you, Matthew. And thank you for pulling together your coughing spell, man. I said you could hear him out there. It was awful. <laughs> Drinking a bottle of water, and it went the wrong way. <clears throat> so, did I hear you say it was quarter sawn hickory? Quarter sawn hickory. You cut and carve. Hickory is tough stuff, man. It's like one of the hardest, toughest woods you can work with. So, hats of love. off. Yep. Seriously. So speaking of awesome things that you folks write and, and photograph and record and send in to us, we got a message recently. Uh, Nick brought, actually it was sent to Nick, he brought it to our attention, from our buddy Jimmy Circle. We haven't seen Jimmy uh, active as much lately. Been wondering about him. Well, we got a message from him, and I know that extended uh, stretches of being red stuff from sheets is everyone's favorite. Um, there's quite a message in here. Uh, Jimmy writes, Greetings. I realize you guys haven't heard from me for a while, but we've had a bit of a setback. 
Uh, some issues with the fire, nobody was hurt, but a lot of smoke damage. Uh, he said, luckily we were okay, and I didn't lose a single guitar. So, see, priorities are, uh, are straight there. Our insurance company put him up in an extended stay hotel nearby. And also staying there are a bunch of construction workers from out of state working on a local oil project. Jimmy said they spend many evenings around the fire pit talking about what they like to do in their spare time. And of course, up came the topic from Jimmy of cigar box guitars, building them, playing them, and generally living them. He said one of the guys cornered me one evening as they were closing things down and started asking him about what is it with these cigar box guitars. We told him about Cigar Box Nation and CB Giddy and Shane Spiel and all that. I uh, told him about building and festivals and belonging to a genre of music where there is room to dance. Room to dance. I like that mm -hmm. idea of the freedom that building your own instruments yep. brings. That you don't just have to take what somebody hands down to you in the form of a store-bought guitar. Room to dance. I love that. Uh, so Jimmy told me about making an instrument using found things and an instrument that actually plays music. Also the satisfaction uh, if you happen to give or one away or sell it that someone else somewhere is making music on something you created. Mm -hmm. Like Glenn you, uh, used to say you're creating art yeah. that makes art. Yeah. The fact that somebody's out there making music on what you built so Jimmy says the next day his new friend informed him that he visited the CB Giddy website and ordered a three-string kit. Uh, and Jimmy could tell from the look in his eyes that he was descending down the rabbit hole where we all live. Uh, the guy went home for the weekend and came back with his kit all built, playing fine, a homemade instrument, and proceeded to tell me, Jimmy, of his next three projects he had in mind. Awesome. So, um... How excited am I, writes Jimmy, really excited. He is my first true convert, and I'm happy for him. If he has half as much fun as I'm having, then he's having twice as much fun as anybody else he knows. Rock on, guys. New converts are fun. So, uh, Jimmy, uh, a little bit of a, uh, using some language that you might hear of a, uh, a cult leader. <laughs> but, you know, in some ways it kind of is like that, and but in a good way, of course. You can kind of feel like, you know, you, you've you've converted to a, a new uh, religion that you haven't ever thought of before, you know, a, a new way of thinking about music and about the world. I know a lot of people tell the story, <clears throat> excuse me, of how cigar box guitars and homemade instrument building changed the way they look at say walking through Lowe's or Home Depot yeah. you suddenly like hey that wash tub and that bucket and that like all the things you can make instruments out of in there so thank you so much Jimmy for writing that and for sending that in we love getting stories like that what you got Nick and as uh, the Mel the guy that uh, oh. built the guitar well we, yeah he sent a photo Thanks. Yeah, he sent a photo and uh, he said uh, first time builder here we go, we'll put this up. So this is Mel, the guy that Jimmy got converted to the cause here. This is his first three-string build. He's got Shane's book, Making Poor Man's Guitars there. Got him a little Vox amp. Took four and a half hours to complete. That ain't bad. Loved the experience of learning to play something I <coughs> built. Thanks to my new friends, Jimmy and Faye, I am hooked on building these fine instruments and accessories. Thanks for the experience. Special thanks to my wife for already helping me out with finding cigar boxes. Nice. So that's Mel, uh, new, one of the newer converts to the uh, cigar box guitar movement. It looks like that's one of our complete DIY kits there, which is on sale right now as part of our 20% off Father's Day sale. If you browse to cbgiddy.com slash dad, D-A-D. It should take you right to the main sale category. Every product in there is 20% off for the next few days. All right. um, so we got another, uh, speaking of Father's Day, um, the time for that? Sure, we'll do the song and then I'll show off the massive songbook of joy. Um, got another song that involves dads and fathers. Uh, one that I, you probably, if you've been watching for a while, you've heard me sing it before. Am I going to do it on this? No. I'm just going to do it on. I'm on an, in a six string groove today, although I played the three a little bit earlier. 
Can you name it from the bass line? <laughs> Here we go. Well, my daddy left home when I was three and he didn't leave much for Ma and me. Just this old guitar and an empty bottle of booze. Well, I don't blame him cause he run and hid But the meanest thing that he ever did Was before he left, went and ate me soup <laughs> Well, he must have thought that it was quite a joke And he got a lot of laughs from lots of folks And it seems I've had to fight my whole life through Some guy would giggle and I'd get red And some guy would laugh and I'd bust his head And I'll tell you, life ain't easy for a boy named Sue I grew up quick and I grew up mean And my fists got hard and my wits got keen And I rode town to town to hide my shame I made me a vow to the moon and stars And I'd search the honky tonks and bars And kill that man and give me that awful name It was Gatlinburg in mid-July And I'd just hit town and my throat was dry And I thought I'd stop and have myself a groove at an old saloon on the street of mud Well, there at the table, the dealing studs At the dirty mangy dog, named me Sue Well, I knew that snake was my own sweet dad From a worn-out picture that my mother had And I knew that scar on his cheek and his evil eye Well, he was big and bent and gray and old And I looked at him and my blood run cold And I said, my name is Sue, how do you do? Now you're gonna die! That's what I told him. Well, I hit him hard right between the eyes, and he went down. But to my surprise, he come up with a knife and cut off a piece of my ear. And I busted a chair right across his teeth, and we crashed through the wall and into the street, and a kicking and a gouging in the mud and the blood and the beer. Well, I'll tell you, I fought tougher men, but I sure. Can't remember when he bit like a mule and kicked like a crocodile or vice versa. I heard him laugh and I heard him cuss and he went for his gun, but I pulled mine first and he stood there looking at me and I saw him smile. He said, Son, this world is rough and if a man's gonna make it, he's gotta be tough and I knew I wouldn't be there to help you along. So I give you that name and I said goodbye And I knew you'd have to get tough or die And it's that name that helped make you strong He said you just fought one hell of a fight And I know you hate me and you got the right to kill me now Wouldn't blame you if you do But you ought to thank me before I die For gravel in your guts and spit in your eye Cause I'm the son of a bitch that named you Sue what could I do? What could I do? Got all picked up and threw down my gun. I called him my paw and he called me a son and came away with a different point of view. And I think about him every now and then, every time I try and every time I win. And if I ever have a son, I think I'm gonna name him Glenn or Nick or Ben, any damn thing but Sue. I still hate that name. When we were preparing for that, Glenn's like, now there's a couple of uh, hitches in there somewhere, isn't there? Where, oh yeah, don't worry, you'll, yeah, don't worry, you'll, you'll find it, you'll find it. And when we ran through it beforehand, I, I stopped it before we got to him. Yeah, it's okay, That's man. why he wanted to run. I realize now that's why he wanted to rehearse it. Well, you got a couple good compliments out there. Kirk Otto, it's good to see you out there, by the way, brother. Of course, Johnny Cash made that one famous, but he didn't write it. It was written so. by... Yeah. Who knows who wrote Boy Named Sue? I should remember. I usually have it written down, but I forget. One of them old Tom Hall? Tom T. Hall? Oh, Tom T. Hall is a recognizable name. Maybe. Might be Tom Hall. Somebody out there knows. I'm waiting waiting to see the comment come up on the screen. So, we got a thank video if you want one. What's that? Sorry, we got a video. Ah, oh, we got a video. Let's play a video, folks. Here's, hey. here's a good video that is oh, going to yeah. be great. It's uh, got lamp parts and CB Giddy parts on yeah, it. Yeah, see, awesome. knows what's in it. Gives us a breather.
That's awesome. <laughs> A little bit of ZZ Top yeah. action there for you. The spinning ukulele. I want to see the the, the mechanism. mechanism. Yeah. Is there a Lazy Susan back there? I don't know. So that's, that's our friend cool. Rob Euchre with the ukulele. That ZZ Top flavored ukulele. And before that, it was Arnie A with the uh, with the, one of his new builds and that beautiful like uh, like Nick was saying while that video was playing. Beautiful box. He did great artwork on it and really interesting uh, tuners. Machine pegs are uh, lamp parts. I don't know what part of the lamp, but they're parts of a lamp. Lamp parts. Eh. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Well, uh, I just wanted, before, we're about to announce the two winners of last week's giveaway of a fine three-string, or it could be four-string if you wanted, uh, Mountain Tenor kits. These kits are one of many things that are on sale 20% off right now. Uh, usually $99.99. You can get one of these for uh, $79.99, which includes free shipping. That's ridiculous. Ugh. No, it's awesome. It's awesome. It doesn't make me cringe at all. It's awesome. Uh, but yeah, Father's Day sale makes a great gift. Goes together easily. Uh, we've been sharing videos and pictures of, of folks who've been building them. The Tupelo Tenor, the Mountain Tenor, really make a, a great sounding uh, guitar. So uh, I want to just briefly talk a little bit about my ongoing uh, adventures of bookery. You know, one likes to stay busy, and I finally finished my Irish project. I started it a few months back. My goal was to create cigar box guitar tablature for all of my favorite Irish, Celtic, Scottish songs. Well, the initial list of 50 or so songs kind of grew and ended up being like 176. And just the other day, I finally finished tabbing out all of them. And I printed out a copy. It's 500 and 60 pages. Uh, it's heavy. <laughs> it's, I've been carrying this thing around because I've been working on editing it and proofreading it. You get a workout just from, from I mean, look up. Come on. That's, that's a serious book. And, and it, it's difficult, like, for me to flip through it, I keep hitting things I want to sing. Mm. The songs that I know, and oh, that's a good one. Got to sing a little bit of it. Actually, some of them, I, before starting, I didn't know all that well, and now I've, I've gotten to know a lot better. Um, people have been asking, when will this be available? Well, this version of it, I, we can't publish. It took me literally 15 minutes by hand to get this coil binding in here. Because the, the book's so thick that our, the little binding machine, it won't feed it in like it Jeez. does on the thinner books. So I was standing there by hand. Glenn's laughing at me. It's like, ha ha, doing it by hand, huh? That's exactly how this guy. This guy um, finally got it done and together, so I could get a copy for uh, uh, editing. Um, so figuring out how to actually publish it, probably in a two-volume set, two separate mm. spiral-bound books. Uh, they'll be a little more manageable. It's like I say, 176 total songs: Irish, Scottish, uh, sea shanties, and such. Um, the song, these song books I've been releasing over the past. It's only been. What, four months okay. since I put the first Irish one out. Um, feels like longer, but it's all of those songs plus another 30 or so uh, that didn't make it into any of those song books because they just didn't quite fit the different themes. Uh, so yeah. yeah, one likes to stay busy, as I say. Who we got out there now, Glenn Watt? William Sneed. <coughs> Holy cow, that is a, an Atlanta phone book. Huh. <laughs> there you know. <laughs> Looks like the church hymnal writes Keith Rierick, Shaq Collins, Bloody Hell. Even, bi even bigger than the Worship Leaders edition of the Cigar Box hymnal by 200 pages. And, you know, Chris McKinney, that is really nice of you to say. I think it's a great observation. That's a steal uh, in terms of, I'm assuming you meant the kit, but, you know. Oh, jeez, yeah. yeah. Bad, blah, blah, blah. Yep, all good, all good stuff out there. People with positive things to say, and that's always nice to see. So thank you. Very good. Yeah. I, uh... I know our buddy John Nickel, he might already, he's probably already there, heading down to Bonnaroo, I believe, this weekend. If you don't know, uh, Bonnaroo is a giant music festival in Tennessee, and our good buddy John Nickel is headed there for the past five years running, sets up a, a booth. 
uh, sells cigar box guitars, talks cigar box guitars, basically preaches the gospel of CBGs down there at that music fest and always has a great time. I sent down a bunch of, of giveaway stuff for him along with a bunch of parts that he needed. So hopefully they have a good time there. Also this weekend, the first inaugural mm -hmm. North Carolina Cigar Box Guitar Festival. I believe our buddy Matt Simpson heading over to it. Hopefully you got that care package of stickers and, and giveaways that I sent down. Uh, there, Matthew. So we have a little giddy presence there at the North Carolina Festival. And uh, yeah, next weekend, Maine. Glenn and I will be up there. Up in Naples. Naples, Maine on Sebago Lake. Unless we forget, the uh, tomorrow also, if you're in the Michigan area, the monthly CBG-minded Michiganders Club meeting at the Bit Red Sky stage in yeah. uh, Bay Harbor, Petoskey, Michigan. That's going on from 1 to 5. That's a new venue for that meeting, I believe. Didn't we get a nice letter from Preston? or? or... If we did, I'm not aware of it. All I right. think they've been at Red Sky for a little bit. But... Okay, well, I might be thinking of the... Is that the... Something's happening up there. Good stuff all over the country, yes. all over the world, even. Uh, but now, without further ado, uh oh, I feel like some theme music would be in order. Give us some funky slap stuff uh, on that uh, thing there. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, there we go. There you go. Um, two winners last week, uh, chosen from amongst people who shared last week's broadcast publicly on Facebook. Each of whom is winning one of these new Mountain Tenor kits, free. Free of charge, yeah. Fall off, hit me in the head. I could see it happening. Uh, so the two winners chosen randomly from the hundreds of people who shared last week's show is first of whom is our good buddy Dave Gatton. Hey. Dave Gatton, a uh, uh, CNC operator guy down there, I believe, who uh, I know has used a number of, of the box kits. I believe nice. built some of these, so I know he'll make quick work of it. And the second winner is William H. Sneed, hey. who is a, a good friend of the show. We always love seeing him out there. So congratulations, Dave Gatton and William Sneed, uh, winners of Mountain Tenor Kits from last week's show giveaway. Thank you for sharing the show in order to uh, be entered for that contest, by the way, each and every one of you. So that's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. So I think that's about, uh, I think that's what we got for this week, folks. Congratulations out there. You people are such good people. Supportive, nice. That change is coming, folks. How about right about? Yeah, send it in. Yeah, 
Send us video, please. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. That's all we got. Thanks. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you again next week, we hope.